deep seek seems to be causing quite the stir, doesn't it? Probably best to give it a test in Comfy UI with some flux generations then, I guess. I've used it before and I'll use it again, Olama. It's really easy to install, even on Microsoft Windows, and they support many of the latest models, including DeepSeek R1. Running the full-on DeepSeek at home would require a very powerful computer and a massive download. Thankfully though, these distilled Olama versions go all the way down to just one gig. That's small enough to fit even on the low-end GPUs. It's also worth noting these DeepSeek R1 models are based on Olama and Quen. You can see which is which in the model architecture. So the 8B, for example, is Llama and the 1.5B is Quen 2. Pick the one which is best for you, but I'll be testing the 14B model against a bunch of others to see what differences we get. Oh, and if you're wondering about DeepSeek AI's Janus Pro, well, let's just say it's good at describing images, but not so good at generating them yet. A simple enough workflow here for testing DeepSeek against a bunch of other models. How will it match up? Well, let's take a quick look at the test setup first. Starting with the model loader, I'm using a smaller FP8 model as I can actually fit this and an LLM into 24 gig by offloading the text encoder. Speaking of which, you might not have noticed a new show advanced menu. Let's hide advanced, right click on that, show advanced. Uh, and there you get this extra option here for device. So now you can set that to CPU or default. Here I've got it set to CPU. That means I don't need this extra force set device, which I usually have there to offload clip. Not a big change I know, but it does save one node. You can have a big stack of LoRa's, but I'm just using the 8-step Hyper LoRa here for some speed. Talking of speed, whilst it doesn't add much, I am also using wave speed there. Apply first block cache. If you're not sure about the wave speed node, then do check out my previous video on it. For prompting, you're likely already familiar with the various ways you can prompt when using a large language model. If not, then essentially you don't have to prompt in the standard way, you can also ask it questions. So for my tests, I've made two very simple requests of the models. The first one being the prompt we've got there, a 1970s photo of a rodent wizard holding his tiny staff aloft. And the other prompt I used in the test was make up a novel animal, so hopefully there each LLM will make up something new, short and sweet, but I think you'll be interestingly surprised by the results. To deep seek enhance, well, any of your existing workflows, all you'll need to do is add two nodes from the Comfy UI Olama custom node pack. Remember the little labels at the top here show you which custom nodes they are with a little fox indicating it's built in. The first node is the Olama connectivity, so that's just connecting to your locally running Olama model. And then you've got Olama generate with a prompt, that's the prompt you saw earlier, and the context there, so we're telling the LLM what we want it to output. This context is fairly basic and you can put whatever you want in there. In this case, I'm asking each model to pretend it's an art critic and to provide a fairly lengthy prompt to describe the image each time. There are some optional options too, and for a bit of creativity, all I did with this one was change the random seed each time. If you want to run in a sort of image editing mode, then you can turn keep context on, but I kept this off during the tests to ensure a fresh start for each model when generating a new prompt. Things can get a little bit samey otherwise, as I'm sure you've noticed when playing with ChatGPT, Claude and the like. Now, one thing about DeepSeek that is different to the other models is that you can see it thinking, uh, literally. Here, let me show you. Right, so I've bypassed that regular expression replace node and also the image generation, and that's the text that we had before, which is normal. But if I run it through again, what we can see this time is that DeepSeek is thinking. Look, here it's starting with some think data. All right, so the user is asking me to, and it's it's doing all this other stuff before it finally produces the actual prompt we want at the end. Hence, I use this regular expression to say that I don't want any of those thinking stages in my prompt. Do feel free to pause and copy that one down if you like, because it's a bit complicated, even though it's very handy. Unfortunately, all those mystical symbols are something you can't put in a YouTube video description. 
The sampler is pretty standard, though there are some new options you might not have played with much yet. First up is this one here, the new sampler gradient estimation, which is, well, new to Comfy UI. And remember, new features aren't available in older versions. So if you're missing this option, then it's time to update. Just for giggles, I'm pairing this with the KL Optimal Scheduler as well. Another new one and also some detailed daemon. That's from a previous video too. Even though I'm using the 8-step LoRa, I'm actually running this through 18 steps because it doesn't take much longer thanks to wave speed. And I think I do get better image quality. So there is a standard image. It's not too bad, is it? Rodent Wizard, he's got a nice little cape, little hat and his staff. Yeah, I think that's nice. But how does DeepSea compare to the others? Well, let's take a look now. These are all my test results in one massive image, and I can certainly see some differences and similarities at a glance. So on the left over here is where I asked each LLM to make up a new type of animal. And on the right, we've got the 1970s style rodent wizard with his staff. The first row at the top is DeepSeek. Then we've got Gemma 2, Llama 3.2, almost 7B, and finally Phi 14B at the bottom there, giving us a very nice mixture of small, medium, and large models, all of which have been released fairly recently. I think you'll agree each set does seem to have its own certain style and characteristics. So let's take the uh, Deep Seek Rodents, for example, have a, a little zoom in on these guys here. Now, they all seem to have hats, don't they? There's a lot of hats there. He hasn't got a hat. But yeah, nine out of 10 rodents prefer hats in this case. There's also a lot of green and lots of capes. But if we have a look down here at the Gemma 2 rodents, well, we've only got one, two, three, four hats by the looks of things. So not quite as hatty. And uh, these all seem to be inside, whereas these have like a mix of, of forest and some inside as well. We come further down, we've got the Llama 3.2 rodents. Well, these are... Similar but different again. Have we got a hat? We've got one hat from Llama 3.2, so that's very different. Most of these also seem to be outside as well. He's inside, but yeah, okay, let's let's scroll down some more. And oh, this is Olmo. So this is very different. You can see like the very 1970s uh, styling there. Those are definitely 1970s patterns. And uh, each of the robes, very, very colorful. So totally different style. And oh, actually these seem to be there's a mixture there, which I hadn't seen before, of left-handed and right-handed staff holders. If we scroll down even more, what do we got here? This is the 5-4 set. So we've got another black and white one there, like Deep Seek did originally. So I'm guessing there it thought, okay, 1970s is old. And we've got some different patterns. So this one, I think, is one of the most varied because you've got indoors and outdoors. Some of them have hats. Some of them have smoke. So I think that's, that's quite varied compared to the others. As for which one did the best to enhance my prompt, well, that's up to you. Taking a look at the animal creation, however, and I have Deep Seek as a clear winner. Why? Well, just because of this one image, it's the only one that made any type of rodent adjacent creature. Oh, it's a little female moose mouse. Yes, it did fail here as well, because, well, there's a human there and I wanted it to create a novel animal, so not such a good one on that. Plus, it's got two cat-like creatures as well. Oh dear. Gemma 2 has a couple of humans, though the bird fox there, I, I quite like that one's, that one's nice. Some water, forest and desert locations making it a bit more varied than Deep Seek. But personally, I don't think it did quite as well in just making up a new animal, which is what I asked for. Llama 3, I think, did a bit better, but again with a forest focus. And here I'm getting the feeling it likes things with wings, uh, perhaps more of an action vibe there, too. Olmo also seems to like wings and forests, and there's a few fairly similar sort of large eye things going on there. Not so many antlers this time, although we've got maybe a couple. Finally, 5-4 sticks with the forest too, and perhaps maybe a tendency towards foxes. Some wings, some antlers, a couple of different styles. Again, fairly varied like with the rodents. So far then, I found this smaller distilled deep seek performs quite well. It has an interesting thinking part to the output, which is something I've not seen before. But once that's been stripped out, the final prompt fits fairly well with Flux. Plus, with Keep Context On, 
You can ask it to make changes, such as making something a bit more cinematic. Here you can see it's kept the spaceship's cargo bay, which I didn't mention in the prompt at all, and given us a fairly realistic output. And then in the next prompt, I can say, can you change it from cinematic into an anime art style instead? And there you go, we get an anime art style rodent instead. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.